everyone, it's Dominique, and today in this video I'm going to show you how you can make your very own stitch markers for your knitting. Now stitch markers come in a variety of styles. The Clover brand that I do have handy, they carry two styles. They carry ones that are like safety pins. You squeeze them to open and close them, so they're very good for crochet or for marking a certain area of your piece. And then they also carry ones that are just rubber rings. But I thought it would be nice to make my own. <coughs> and they make wonderful gifts. You can make them in a variety of colors and different styles. They kind of look like earrings. And you can make them in different sizes. They do sell bigger rings. Typically, um, you can buy this equipment in a beading store or craft store. You may have difficulty finding a 10 millimeter or 1 centimeter sized ring which is what I have here. And then you need some beads and as well you need a pin and it has to have a very flat end on the bottom so your beads will stay in the position and a flat end on top so it's not a nail. looks like a nail but it's not. You will also need pliers or wire cutters. Um, I don't recommend these. I got these on a whim. Um, the wire cutters are in the center, the pliers are on the end, and the issue with this um, system that I have is when I cut the wire, it's very hard to gauge how much I'm cutting off because it's in the center and it's very hard to tell and see the proper length of the wire as you try to cut it. So if you can invest into a separate tool that has a wire cutter at the end and then regular wire pliers so you can bend and twist your wire whatever way you want. So start with your pin <coughs> and here's my bead collection. It's not very big but it's getting there. And just pick a bead. <coughs> Excuse me, pick a bead. Um, it would be wise to start with a smaller bead, as I've done here. You can see in the center. I had to start with a smaller one because a bigger bead has a bigger hole in the center. And Putting a smaller bead prevents the bigger bead from falling off. So, start with a small bead and just thread them on whatever way you like. I have a pink flower bead. And then I'd like another small bead. And if you're giving these as a gift, it would be best to give them in at least a package of four. Oh, I have two flower beads, so I'll remove one. <clears throat> and the reason why I suggest four, minimum of four, for a gift for a knitting friend. Um, that way they can, for example, if they're knitting a sweater that has sleeves or if they're knitting some trousers or pants, then they have um, both sides evenly marked. So at least four, go from there. And maybe, what did I do here? I did blue. So maybe I'll do something a little bit. Do a clear one. And 
and I think I have space for one more small one. So you want to make sure you still have enough wire at the top to fold over your metal ring. And when you're cutting wire, it's always best to cut a little amount first. And if you need to cut more, then cut a little bit more. Because I'm noticing I'm cutting off too much wire, and I think it's primarily because my wire cutters are back here and not at the front, so I have less control over my gauge. So, this is going to be my new stitch marker. I'll post photos of it on my blog <coughs> as I make the sets. And then you want to put your ring over the wire and then start bending. You can use your wire pliers and start bending it so that way you can either try and fit the end of the wire into one of the beads, that way it doesn't catch onto the knitted work, which is a really good idea. So if you can manage it, bend it in. If not, it's susceptible to close the wires together, the end of the wire and the main body of the wire where all the beads are on. Try and keep them as close together as possible to prevent snagging on the work. So you may have to flick it around a bit until you get it into the proper position. You may need to use tweezers to hold it here. And just use a firm grip once you're in the proper position that you want to close the wire or bend the wire. Careful not to squeeze your beads because if they're glass or ceramic, porcelain, crystal, they may break. And it can take up to 10 minutes maybe just to get it right. And I also recommend trimming the wire if you need to. And a lot of these, they're called jump rings or split rings, they're not fully closed. So what you might want to do is clamp them closed a little bit better so it doesn't snag on the work or whatnot. And if you want to give these as a gift, you can put them in a little plastic baggie that reseals itself or on a safety pin, a huge safety pin, so someone can stick it into their knitting bag and not lose them. But there you go. That is how you make your very own stitch markers. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.